Over the years, I've helped thousands of people get into CNC, but I still consider myself to be a beginner, which puts me in a great position to be able to tell you the five biggest mistakes that beginners make when getting into CNC. Let's start with a real simple one. Don't try and skip the basics. Now, the reason that this is important is because machines all come in different types of setup, different type of components and options available on them. And obviously everyone is also coming from different backgrounds. Now I've helped machinists get into CNC that have struggled because it is not the same way as working as they're used to. I've seen people come from laser and 3D printing backgrounds and again, struggle with CNCs because things are different. So if you're coming into this, come into it with a blank slate. Yes some knowledge of certain things may help you along the way. But ultimately, if you try and skip steps, that is likely where you're going to hit issues and ultimately slow your entire progress down. Now, when it comes to narrowing down what are those basics, it will vary from people's opinions, but a good starting place for me is understanding the terminology before you even touch a CNC machine. Because then when you start reading about it in forums or watching videos like this, you will understand the words that are being referenced and then everything just starts to make more sense and hopefully makes the process much easier as you get into it. Now, on terminology, I should point out, this is one of the areas I see people getting most frustrated about. They're either trying to search for help or ask questions and don't know the correct terms and phrases to use, all the responses that they're getting don't make sense because again, terminology is being used that they don't understand. Now this can often make people feel like they shouldn't be part of the CNC world. It is perfectly normal, especially when you are a beginner, not to understand these things. But as I say, try to take the time to understand them. Go and Google words if you have to, or ask people to explain it in a different language. There are a lot of people out there like myself who remember what it was like when you're getting started and how difficult it can be. Then beyond terminology, it's looking at little things like the different types of software that you need to go along with it, the type of bits that you can use and the impact it has on your material. Understanding some of the basics around all of those will just help you get from A to B much quicker when you are starting out as a beginner. Next is people trying to move too quickly or do too many things in a short period of time. Do remember, this is not a race. I've already mentioned that CNC is made up of multiple pockets of information, whether it is your software, your bits, the hardware on the machine itself. And you need to continually learn little bits of information about each of those to keep progressing. Now, most people watching this are probably hobbyists or small businesses trying to add an extra side hustle to what they are already doing. But take into account that operating CNC machines and machining in general, it is a career, it is a job for a lot of people. And that type of information doesn't come overnight. People take years to accumulate the type of information to operate things successfully and get brilliant results. Now for your average user, you're probably talking at least a month before they start to produce something they are happy with. I'm not saying you won't machine things before that, but it may not be to the quality you're after. And it's learning how to look at the things that you have already done, understand what part of the process could be improved to make the end result better. So it is ultimately better to keep progressing slowly and chipping away each area of those pots of information than to try and run in aggressively and almost trip over yourself, which will cause you more issues in the future. The next biggest mistake is one that catches a lot of people out. It is having unrealistic expectations versus your investment. Now, it doesn't matter what end of the scale you enter into the CNC world, whether it is a $200 3018 machine or a $5,000 Onefinity machines or things that sit in the middle like this. Your expectations need to match where you sit on that scale. So if you are investing in the lower end of the range, you're not going to achieve the same speed and results as you would do at the opposite end of the range. Now, when I start saying it, people are probably going, yeah, that's really obvious. But to a lot of people, it's actually not. They watch videos on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok of people producing amazing pieces of work, usually sped up, and then they expect to be able to produce that on their machine in a fast amount of time. Now, this is all about those expectations. You may still be able to do great pieces of work on a 3018 machine, but it is probably going to take five or six times as long as a mid-range machine. Now, just to put that into perspective, I used to produce a product on my 3018 machine, and it would probably take two to three hours to machine out for one particular part. Then when I jumped up to the next level of machine, 
I was producing five or six of those within an hour. So that is what I'm talking about. The quality was still the same of them, but the speed I was achieving it did vary. So it's understanding where your machine or your investment sits in that scale and having a realistic expectation to match it. And if you're in any doubt of understanding the expectation of a machine that you're looking at, Go and ask on various forums, Facebook groups, that type of thing, and get people to show you what they produce when they were a beginner and what they are producing now, because the range between them can adjust. And as I say, you can still get good quality from lower end machines, it just takes longer to achieve it. And therefore, if you are trying to make profit from your machine, the higher end machines will usually do it quicker, therefore saving you money. The next mistake is not understanding your material. Now, there is always a debate going on about whether CNC is considered to be woodworking. Now, I am firmly in the yes camp, and one of the reasons for this is to be a successful person with a CNC machine, you need to understand the material that you you are working with. Now there are obviously some basic things like softwood versus hardwood, but it goes a lot deeper than that. It is understanding things like the grain direction and the way your CNC is impacted by that when cutting it. It is things like the moisture of the wood. It is the density of those grains as well. So there are a lot of variables that can ultimately make a difference between whether your job is going to be successful or not, or I suppose the amount of cleanup that job is going to need as a result. And the more you understand about the woods and the species, the better results you should get. And this doesn't just apply to wood as well, it can apply to things like acrylic. For example, there is cast acrylic and there is extruded acrylic. These both have different melting points and typically cast acrylic will machine better. But you normally can't get cast acrylic below a certain thickness. So there are trade-offs there. Similar thing with metal as well. Aluminium, for example, there are different types of aluminium composites and some will be quite gummy when you are machining them and can stick to your bits. Others will cut better. So as I say, understanding more about the material that you plan to machine will make a huge impact in the success of your job and ultimately how clean it comes out and therefore how happy you are with that product. I went to move on then and realized I forgot something very important how safe your material is to machine. Now there are certain types of wood species that when machined and breathed in can be very harmful. Some can even make you pass out. There is things like MDF where it is very fine particles that can stick on your chest and ultimately give you very bad cough or even worse conditions. Things such as when machining maybe like plastics, acrylics and vinyls, these can give off toxic gases. So it's not to put you off these materials, it is just to make sure that you do your research and understand them before you start machining them. And the final big mistake is people giving up. Now this doesn't require a huge explanation because usually if people have got to this stage, they're pretty much at breaking point with their machine anyway. But do remember, you've invested time, you've invested money in it, so do what you can to get past those hurdles. Whether it is reaching out to people that you know, whether it is websites, different forums and groups, maybe even one-to-one -one help where somebody video calls you and goes through your issues with you. Ultimately, if you can get past that stage, you will be happier once you then start to get on with your machine. And do remember, it's not always you. Sometimes a lot of people will get stuck at an issue and they'll believe they're doing something wrong or they don't have the knowledge to fix it, when actually it can be a component that's wrong on the machine and you need somebody else to point that out to you or help you diagnose it. So don't always believe that it is your fault. And as I say, do what you can to move on. Everybody has days where they just wanna go it and walk away, that is perfectly fine. If that's the point you're at, walk away, come back the next day or in a couple of days with a fresh head and try another crack at it. Now there is a difference between giving up and walking away and saying, this is not for me. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you that CNC is for everybody, it's genuinely not. It's like hobby and sports, some of them you'll enjoy, some of them you won't. But if you ultimately get to a point that you're happy with and then you decide to walk away, that is a much easier way of doing it than just giving up halfway through and almost throwing away everything that you've done before that. So I'm a culprit of some of them myself, but those are the five biggest mistakes I believe people make when getting into CNC. Now, if you have others, whether the ones that you've done or have seen, let me know in the comments section down below. It is always great to get other perspectives on topics like this. I do hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, of course, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if not done so already. Thank you all very much for watching, and final thanks as always goes to my patrons. If you want to get involved for one-to-one -one help, giveaways and early access to the content then definitely check out my patron links in the description area i will see you all very soon on the next video